Hi, I'm Graham, and I play keyboards for Tokyo Police Club, and you are watching the 24 Hours Podcast. T minus four, three, two, one. The following is a 24 Hours Podcast. Tokyo Police Club, the album, A Lesson in Crime. Graham Wright, thank you. How are thank you? Thank you. I'm very well. How about yourself? Not bad. Good. Second appearance in Vancouver in a relatively short period of time. Yeah. Why, why do you schedule it that way? <sighs> Good question. Uh, I was just talking earlier today about how this is sort of the superfluous tour. Um, we've been touring on 60 minutes of music for like a year and a half now. And it's just, I don't know, you have to, you have to tour to make money, obviously. It's the only way you can get paid. You're not making very much off royalties and that's just the truth of the business. And it just sort of came to transpire that, you know, we'd done all these tours, we'd hit pretty much everywhere twice at least. Uh, we were just in the studio for a while, working on the next record, and then, you know, we just needed before the end of the year, we just needed to go on tour one more time just to sort of balance the books. And there, and there are a few places on this tour uh, in the states, especially where we haven't been for a good year. But Vancouver somehow just we were. It's funny because the last show we did here wasn't even on a tour. We just did a, a fly-in show. Mm -hmm. We did three shows that weekend, and one of them was here, and then this one just ended up getting scheduled so soon after. And I always worry that people are going to sort of, you don't want to be overexposed, you know, you don't want people to be like, oh, they're back again. Well, I, I just saw them, they played probably the same songs, so. But it's never a bad sign if you're back again. That could mean due to popular demand. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, and I think tickets have been good enough for tonight that obviously I'm wrong about people being sick of us in this city at least. But Let's talk about the momentum as it builds, because I mean, you've really developed, the band has really developed a lot of buzz. Yeah. And, and obviously as you go from city to city and gig to gig, you see that momentum growing. Is that at a point now where you're you're sitting there, or standing there on stage, looking back and going, you know, this is this is really taken off? Yeah, you know, this tour in particular, and uh, I guess our last tour as well, have sort of been our first first real legitimate headlining tours. I mean, right from the get go, we tried to do some tours on our own. Just to, I think it's important to sort of forge your own way and not just always be riding on the coattails of their bands. Although we did lots of that too, and and this tour, yeah, you're right. I've just really there's. On a nightly basis, pretty much, I've been able to look out at the crowd and say, you know, I can see faces all the way back, and people know the words, and they're enjoying themselves, obviously. And just these bigger rooms, you know, I, I was standing up here just looking at the stage earlier, just uh, sort of reveling in the distance from the back of the room to the front, which, I mean, we've obviously played rooms that are smaller than this small bar area where we're sitting right now. So just, yeah, seeing the evolution of it is definitely encouraging. I mean, we don't want to, obviously you don't want to stagnate too much, so, yeah, we're in the bass now. Do we want to pause for a second here? You're playing a club gig tonight. You've been doing a few festival gigs. I mean, obviously there's yeah. a vast difference between yeah. playing outdoors when the sun is shining and playing indoors <laughs> with, with people openly drinking. What, what is the big difference from a band perspective? Um, it's, it's, it's so totally different. I mean, just the whole atmosphere between the two and... Everything about it. I mean, a club show, obviously, you're headlining, you get here early, you sound check, we go to the hotel, have dinner, whatever. The festival, you know, you get there, you load on the stage, you play, you get off. There's no sound check, there's no prep time, really. Um, I kind of like playing festivals a little better, just particularly right now, I love playing to big crowds. Uh, and, you know, we played to decent crowds in, in clubs for sure, but at festivals, the crowds are just always, no matter who the band is, the crowd at a festival is always going to be bigger than it would be at a regular show just because there's people there that wouldn't go to regular shows because, you know, they're getting 10 bands instead of one band. And, you know, lots of new people are being introduced to you. And as a bonus, you get to see lots of other bands for free. Mm -hmm. You know, I never get to go to concerts anymore because I'm never at home. But when I'm at a festival, I can sort of make up a little schedule and go from place to place and see people. And they have catering at festivals. Which oh, is yeah. Awesome. <laughs> For sure. Now, let's talk about home. Home is Newmarket, Ontario. Uh, I actually live in Toronto now. Okay, but, but home, you Haiti. found it in, in Newmarket, Definitely. Ontario. Um, how did the band come together, and what's the origin of the name Tokyo Police Club? Uh, well, we started out in, in school. We were still friends for a really long time, actually. I've known most of these guys since we were in fourth grade. And individually, we were just all music fans, you know, grown up wanting to do it. And as time went by, I just, it was just sort of became the thing that we did. You know, every, every group of friends has their own sort of way that they interact and way they be social. And for us, it was always playing music. You know, on Friday nights, we would get together in whoever's basement and just plug in and jam. And I mean, at the beginning, obviously, it was embarrassing and really amateur. But that was just, it just came out of that, getting together and having fun and just really doing it. I mean, always 
for me at least, with an eye towards someday doing it as a career, but at the same time, just basking in mm -hmm. the fact that we were playing music with other people and you know that we could be a band too, just like all these bands that we love to watch on TV or listen to on the radio or whatever. And so it just really grew naturally out of all these different formations, you know, or like I would sing or other people would sing or whatever, write the songs. And Tokyo Police Club was just sort of the last incarnation of our ever evolving band. And that was the one that stuck. And the name came from just the song Cheered On, mm -hmm. where we say Tokyo Police Club in the chorus. Right, right. Just, we just plucked it right out of there. Real. It's weird just to look and say, you know, what, we never asked for all that responsibility. And we try not to think about it just because the stress would completely do your head in. But all I ever do is play keyboards. And now you sort of end up just being thrust into this role yeah. of business and having to make these big decisions. And, you know, it's weird, man. It's uh, not what you expect to be doing. But at the same time, I mean, I'm learning things that I never in a million years would have learned otherwise. So I think it's a, a positive experience. I think it's really valuable. And I think it's been helpful for us but at the same time sometimes I just step back and say why why am I doing this mm -hmm. like what what am I doing at the border you know filling out forms yeah. to import a van or something with all these 50 year old truckers like I should be in basement playing my goddamn keyboard but it's fine uh, it's I really like the sound Tokyo Police Club um, and I'm really happy for your success and you're a solid thank guy you. thank you very much thanks nice very much you, I appreciate it all right. 24 hours.ca